hello everyone welcome back again this is jesse and then in today's tutorial we learn about how to apply a machine learning model to detect malicious url in julia okay so for example let's say we have a normal website like this right pro. this website is used for scanning website to see whether they are true whether they are good or not right so to tell me to ask a lot of questions all this stuff so this is one, one website you can use Another website you can use is virus total, right? The same as we did. So let's use something like this. Let's change it from Google to Bank. So it's going to scan it, right? And then tell us whether it is clean or not clean. So it perfectly scan it for us and then give us this information based on several antivirus, right? So we can do the same thing with this website. Okay. So that's what we want to do in today's tutorial using Julia. So let's see how to do that. So be using these packages. So be using these packages. So pkg.add data frame. If you already have it, you don't need this. Then circuit lane. If, if you already have it, you just go straight away with this. So we'll be going with using data frames to have access to be able to manipulate our data frame, our data, and then using circuit lane, right? So we will be important fit, transform fit is very important, and then predict. So we are going to be importing these ones to, to be able to use it straight away and then circuit sk import to be able to import all the features of circuit lane right okay so we'll be reading loading our data storing it inside this data frame of urls this is already prepared by for us by a friend a uh, fader so the the data data will be in the link below so he has already processed it perfectly collected it several information several websites and he has labeled it for us so it'll be easier for us to use it to build our model so this is how it's going to be so this is our label right and this is our features so it has bad 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 and good so these are our normal URLs so we'll be trying to use this one to build our model okay so it's quite huge now when you check with the first step it's going to give us this amount of values it's a normal thing we can do and when you check for the size, it's quite a huge sum of that is over 42,000, no 420,000, right? Which is quite huge, it's quite a great work done just that. Okay, so we're trying to build features and then labels and then use it to apply it on our model. So we'll be converting our labels and our features into arrays. So we'll convert our URLs the underscore dot URL for the URLs into an array. It's quite plenty and we'll be doing the same thing for the features right and to convert all of them for the features so we're converting our labels into an array also and we are going to be building a list whereby we'll be able to use it for further to aspect so using this function we're going to store it inside this array then we're looping through the urls of the normal url features then you're going to be pushing them over to form a list right so this is what it's going to give to us when you do it it's quite nice this is to make it easier for us to use so in another way you can also split them try and clean them and try to build features from these ones by going straight away by creating your own function just like in the previous tutorial in a python to create your own function to split this backslash and then all these dots and then comes off to be able to create it for us but in this case in this tutorial we'll be relying on the tokenizer of circuit lane to do most of it for us okay so for the visualization what i was talking about this tfid is for time frequency and then inverse document frequency vectorizer so the number of times these values appear in this test be converting them into a vector to be able to for it to be easier for us to build features and to be able to use it for our model building so, so be important feature extract dot test then tfid vectorizer we store it inside this vectorizer and then we're going to be going straight away with this okay so we'll be using fit transform to transform our list that we built here with our vectorizer to fit it together don't forget to bring the bank otherwise it's not going to work
Okay, so after that, let's see. Let's try and split our data into a training set and then testing set. So we're using SK import model selection then train test place to be importing this function to be able to help us with the test splitting and then testing data and training data splitting so after that we're using this function so s train s test y train y test then train test split which we imported from scikit learn then we'll be applying it on our features here right which was this and then our y for the labels and then it tests out the real point two which is going to be 80 20 or 20 80 random size of 42 okay so let's move on straight away it's going to load for us perfectly nice okay so it has done it well for us so let's see it has created it for us based on it good 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 bad 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 <laughs> so now let's try and build our model so we'll be using logistic regression so we'll be importing lin from linear model logistic regression and then we're using that logistic regression to build our model. Right, so be be storing inside this variable model, and then fit intercept is equal to true. We're building this fit, which we imported from scikit-learn, to build a relation between the S string and the Y string to to fit it inside the pattern. Okay, that's finished doing that for us. So now let's try and check the uh, accuracy of our model. Using this for this function to so some predict model y right the model that we have here and then the s test which we split it and y test we're going to find based on the length of it perfect so we see that the model that the accuracy of our model was 0 0.9642 which is quite similar to the previous tutorial that we had so that means that our model is quite huge and you can also use this same format on an unknown variable or unknown URL to be able to test and see whether it is good or bad. So thank you for watching. If you have any question or contribution, can just put inside the comment section so that everybody can benefit. Please don't forget to subscribe. Stay blessed.